My name's Lewis Burns. I'm Tabagawa Rajri man. I'm sitting here at the Spirit or Lo Spirito del Tianeto near Bergamo, which is near Milan in northern Italy. Actually, working on this rock behind me, painting that today. Um, but uh, I'm just I want to talk about uh, why I'm here and what I'm trying to do in the near future. So the reason I'm here is because in the past many years ago, I'm talking about. Uh, 16 years ago, I came to Milan with a business, a group of Aboriginal businesses, and I met a few people there um, that became acquaintances and then eventually friends. And as a result of that, I was inv invited back. Uh, that was when I came to Italy, to Milan, to do the Fiera Milano, so Milan Fair, which is a huge, big deal in Milan. Um, I haven't been back to that since, but since then I've been invited to and attended Lo Spirito del Pianeta, which simply means the spirit of the planet, uh, six times now. This is my sixth. Because of the way I see how we are re well received by the public in Italy, I wanted to not only share, try and share that experience with as many Aboriginal people who carry the culture, so, you know, artists and dancers and singers and Footage players, storytellers. I wanted, I wanted to share that as often as possible with as many Aboriginal people as I could because it's a, it's bringing the culture, um, bringing our culture and sharing it with this gathering of people from in, uh, Indigenous people from around the world. So the first, the first time I came, it was probably ten, maybe fifteen groups. I think there's about thirty groups at this uh, event we're at now. I don't. I don't know, I didn't count, but there's a lot of people here. It takes two buses to move everybody. So the two the two reasons that I I keep coming back is one, because I enjoy the way that they treat Aboriginal people or Indigenous people. They treat us all like royalty, doesn't matter where we're all from. I wanted to share uh, that feeling that I've been getting, the feeling of uh, being... They put, they put a, it feels like you're more valuable than you are when you're back in Australia, when you, the way they treat us here. And I wanted other Aboriginal artists, storytellers, singers, whatever, to, to experience that as well. So every time I come and bring a group, I, I bring a different group. And, uh, and I'll do that until I run out of people that I think are worth bringing. Um, if you know what I mean, run out of people that I think that I think you carry in the culture, but the more and more people are doing that anyway, so I don't think I will ever will run out of people to ask. The other thing is uh, seeing the the way that the public actually receive our presentations and the, and the impact that it has on them, like it touches their hearts and it touches their souls, because a lot of people, after seeing the performances that we do or the presentations, they get emotional, and a lot of people actually start crying. Um, but it's it's a happy, they're happy tears. Uh, I enjoy I enjoy getting that sort of feedback that people are so overwhelmed with what we do that they bring them to tears. Um, and I want people in Australia to experience that as well. Not only Aboriginal people, but all Australians. So that's the reason why I invited. Like each time I come here, I assess situation that we're in looking at how everything's set up with the stalls with the the uh, restaurants and the bars that they set up temporarily and uh, and the two stages what I wanted to do uh, I wanted to each each time I came I couldn't help but imagine this festival in Dubbo and when I look at the Dubbo showground it's kind of ideal because everything that they got here we've got room for in our showground. So I've, um, a couple of times I said, we want to try and bring this to Australia, you know, but I never really thought any more about it and had too many other things on the plate. But um, this time I asked them if they wanted to bring it to Australia, Ivano, and mainly Ivano, and, and all his volunteers and helpers. And uh, he made the point to fly down to Dubbo fly down to Australia and come to Dubbo. It stayed with me for a couple of weeks in November last, November 2015. And um, 
We went down there to look at the venue, had a look at Dubbo Showground, talked to a few people around Dubbo and we made the decision that we're going to try and bring it to Dubbo this November. So hopefully we, we want to make it a pre-event so that people can, everyone can enjoy it. Uh, a lot of people, because we're having a bit of trouble raising money, people say we've got to have to charge, but I don't want to, I'd rather spend the time raising money because we don't really want to charge people. If they want to donate, that's fine, but I don't want to have to charge people because we don't want to um, turn anybody away. So that's what we're aiming for. Um, and that's what we're doing. So we've got five months to pull that together. It's a lot, a lot of it's all organized on paper. It's just a matter of getting it done. Yeah, we've got five months to organize that and really, I, I, I'm confident it can be done. Every time I talk to someone, they, they, they're doubtful. But I need to talk to people that are positive, not negative, and make it happen. So hopefully I can recruit um, some more people to get on board when they get home. Uh, hopefully when they see what footage you've been able to get and, and, and uh, capture, it'll show them that it's important. It's an event that really needs to come to Dubbo. I just, um, I seen, it, I seen that it was becoming so popular and that more and more people around the world were learning about it. Um, I, I foresaw that it would eventually end up in Australia anyway. So I just said, why not Dubbo? Because we need a good event that's going to be our flagship event of the year, you know, something big, something that brings a lot of people to town and that's, I think this is a perfect, a perfect uh, gathering, a gathering of indigenous people of the world. They always get a little bit better and I've noticed that, you know, the, the atmosphere is just as exciting, just as electric and seeing how many people rock up for some of the evening shows, it just blows me away how many people actually turn up here. When you have a look at the size of the parking lot, it's got a little bit about, I don't know, 50 cars. But I'm sure I saw 10 to 12,000 people in front of that stage the other night. Maybe even more, I don't know, you couldn't move. But um, I'm always overwhelmed with what they do. Like, this is all new. You know, that's impressive, all of these stalls. That they weren't here before. Um, they do something a little bit different each time. Like that uh, blindfold where you, you look, you go through the room with the senses, you concentrate on other senses. That, that was, um, we had something like that last time I was here, but it was, uh, they called it the awakening of the senses and people came through blindfolded hand in hand and then they'd be sat down and then there'd be a group in the room and they'd give them their cultural presentation, but without them seeing it. So it's, they hear it and feel it and smell it. And, that sort of thing. So I was in one of those, and you know, I played didgeridoo over everybody, which made them, which, which um, surprised a few people, because when you play didgeridoo over somebody, that close enough, they can feel the sound waves going through. They're like a energy, heal, healing energy. Yeah. So you know, that's wake the awakening of the senses was good. It's something different every time. But I do notice that the stages are getting more, the more and more. Um, spectacular I suppose. The stage is twice the size as I remember it first year. The stage inside is bigger than it was the first time I came. So the whole thing's growing. Like they you notice the backdrop inside that goes right to the roof mm. ceiling. And right from wall, wall to wall. Well they only had a small one once at one stage. So so that they had the spirit of Delpinetta behind the the stage but it but it was just sort of like pushed against the back wall. So I've seen it growing and a lot of the stalls, you know, they're flooded outside now. There's a lot of stalls outside, people have to pack up every evening. But um, more importantly, the different groups I meet, like almost every time I come, I meet another group that I've never met. So this year it was the Malaysians and, uh, and the Borneo mob, I haven't met them before. It's good to meet them because eventually I'd like to you know, be in contact with them and it's best to contact the mobs that I meet near because one, I know them, two, they've got passports and they've got a bit of travel experience. Otherwise you've got to worry about people coming. There's didgeridoo players all around the world. I mean, 
There's a few here. Some people, like well, I saw one of my digits for the sound. He, he, he said, oh, it looks nice too, but he bought it for the sound. So some people buy them for the, the look, and some people want to know what it sounds like. He actually brought a tuner with him. He keyed, checked the key of all my digits. I've got two C sharps and two Ds, well, one, one D now, but um, there's didgeridoo festivals in Italy, Spain, France, England, Switzerland, Netherlands, Japan, and USA that I know of, and now Mexico. I actually got invited to one in Tijuana, and they call it TJ for short, Tijuana, and they, they call the festival TJ Redo. Yeah. One in else? Switzerland is called Swiss Redo. <coughs> Always looking for support in the way of volunteers, sponsors, um, and we want a lot of people to come. So tell the world, tell everybody you know, and, and bring them to Dubbo in November.